Welcome back to the QPL Stage 1 Finals. We're welcoming back to the desk Jackie and ZXX as well. And uh, we just got through the third Challenger matchup, and I've seen chat. They're like, wait wait a second. There's supposed to be four Challenger games. That's right. We Good job. You passed the test. Let's take a look at the bracket. That Challenger matchup will actually be played a little bit later, uh, accompanying the, the the players and accommodating the players as, as, as best as we can, which means that, hey, we get to jump into a round of 24 match, but don't worry, Sib versus Zanaku will be coming up a little bit later. However, gentlemen, I bring you in for our first round of 24 bracket. Now, let's also say this becomes best of three. At this point in round of 24, it's also double elimination. You lose, it's okay. You go down to the lower bracket, you can still fight your way through. But this is the first time that we're gonna see the regions kind of mingle and uh, go head to head here as we enter into the round of 24. So Jackie, I'm gonna start with you. Um, Avic versus Nosfa. Mate, this is going to be a bit of a bang at the start of off, right? The Brazilian man himself is going to be swinging up against the tall pole of the European Quake scene that is Avuk. I think this is going to be really fun. Um, I, I had the, the lucky opportunity as well to speak to Avuk uh, a little while ago recently going on the Endpoint podcast and sort of just have a bit of a chat with him after we finished up and see how he's feeling. And it seems like he's pretty confident coming into this, man. I, I'm just excited to see how he performs. Also, it's great as well, right? Because as you mentioned, we get the cross-region play immediately now. Now. we don't even have to wait until a couple of days in we're getting that from the get-go mm -hmm. so this is going to be sick to just see the clash of the two play styles this early on to the bracket yeah i mean avex start with a bang and mm. the this stage but then kind of dropped off a little bit so interesting to see as jackie said how he comes back from that he's definitely one of my favorite players to watch really engaging style and i think nostra will respond well to that because it's nostra himself loves to play quite an aggressive style so it's going to be interesting, obviously quite far apart in terms of regionality, but that's something they've got to deal with. Let's take a look at uh, Avic's results here over the course of the 13 weeks of Stage 1. Um, again, some some wins in there, uh, but also some, some tough losses, right? However, um, and I throw this back to you guys, you know... It, it wasn't like we weren't seeing Avic play great. Um, we had some really close matches. We saw him uh, dominate in some regards, mm. but certainly not exactly the results that I think he would have loved to achieve here in stage one. Oh, no. Um, I, I'll jump in here before you, Dan, just to make my quick Thanks. quick point. Just a quick one. If you'll notice, obviously, the only zero there is in his favor, right? The one three zero against Tox that we've now seen leave yeah. the Pro League. But as you said, he had like a really close season. He showed a lot. I think his steel's been tested an awful lot throughout this stage. He's still up there. He's still competitive. We just need to see him back on championship form now. No, I agree with you. We, I don't think I'd be entirely happy with the way he performed. And maybe that 3-0 over Tox now in context wasn't as great at the time as we thought it was. Um, but he did have a cover easy. And then that mid-period of two ones against Cypher kills in base, kind of they're the three best players in the region on, on form. Took a took a over Venga when he was really on the up and up. And then Spotty and Coolers, this is the time when they've been really grinding hard. So he's come up against virtually every player in the peak of their form and still came away with close two ones throughout. So... Yeah, it's not his the favorite results for him, but again, they're not entirely bad. And uh, his opponent in this matchup is going to be Nosfa. As you mentioned, we're seeing the mingling of these two regions happening right away here in the round of 24. And Nosfa has, uh, you know, certainly had a battle himself through the Americas, uh, doing his best to, you know, uh, defeat who he can, taking some maps here and there. And we'll take a look at his standings as well in just a moment over the 13 weeks. Um, but, you know, again, kind of a, a similar thing. Some wins on there. There were a couple of uh, closeouts, one but from Rafa, one coming up by Saigib, but also uh, several victories in there as, as well. Yep. And he's somebody that has kind of found his level, I think, a little bit. So, obviously, really setting the scene of light when he came into the QPL all those kind of long time ago, it feels like now, yeah. and has kind of stabilized in in that mid to lower bracket, which is, I think, about where he is at the moment. He definitely has yeah. the, the, the skill to, to perform better, but it's quite inconsistent, as you can see from this results. Great 3-0s over people he should be beating, but then also losing to Zeneca and Dewey, who are right at the bottom of the leaderboard. So that's their two results you would expect him to pick up. And if he picked those up, then he would have shot really quite high up the leaderboard. So it just shows how close he is, once again, to, to being just above, potentially where he's sitting in seventh, but 
I think inconsistency is the word I would use for for Nosfer. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jackie, any thoughts there? I think he is a genuine talent. Like, the guy is really skilled when it comes to Quake, and he always had that innovative play style of being aggressive when he needed to be. But obviously, the longer we've seen him in QPO, I think he's sort of refined himself a lot. So it is interesting that this is one of his, you know, lesser seasons. Really, I think the form's still there. It's just as Dan said, it was the important results that slipped by him. More specifically, obviously, the games he should have been winning, and that's just really put him into a bit of a hizzy. And, uh, you know, this is a best of three, so two maps to take it home and advance in the bracket. With that being said, let's take a look at the picks and bans for this particular matchup. And uh, there you have it. Uh, as we scan through this, CSX, what do you see? Slash versus Athena, obviously, on Blood Covenant is going to be a pretty tasty affair. Always entertaining <laughs> mm -hmm. to see two light champions with lots of skills go head to head. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, Apart from that, it, it's fairly standard. I think the BG versus Ranger, if we get to a third map, I would definitely put into the favor of the Ranger just because the mobility on Awoken is pretty yeah. key. But BG still can hold his own, but that's probably the only real big defining difference between the two. It's fairly standard. Now we move into the best of threes as people can get more picks and bands going. Jackie? I think Awoken is quite a tasty one at the end. Um... You know what, looking for this, like looking at this, as, as much as kind of my heart's telling me Avok, I, I think my head's telling me to go with Nosfer in terms of the actual veto we've got here. I think this could be a Nosfer win. Like if we go to Awoken as well, I reckon that still plays into his favor. There's a lot in this veto for me that says that this could be quite a big day for Nosfer if he just turns it on and is able to roll back the form a little bit. Well, uh, that's a bold prediction. Uh, according to the map one winner prediction in Twitch chat, uh, most everyone disagrees with you, Jackie. They've 86% <laughs> saying Avix got this map one, uh, Nasva uh, 20 so percent. So we'll, we'll see. This is just that's just one map. Maybe they agree with you, Jackie, and they're just like, no, we just think Avic will win the first map, but not the the other one. So we'll yeah. we'll have to see. But we're moments away from jumping in this matchup. I'm going to uh, I'm going to take a seat over here to the side and let you all take it on. So good luck and enjoy this first matchup in the round of 24. Oh, cheers, we we will we will enjoy this one thoroughly as per usual. Dan, I'm always please, Dad. <laughs> Let us have some alone time. Um, honestly, Dan, I, I think this is one of those where, again, you know, every, even though everyone says that I'm wrong, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm, I'm going to prove you wrong by being right. That's uh, never happened. So let's let's not bank on that one. I think the Twitch chat are indeed right this time because if everything goes the way it should, Avec will be winning this one. I'm going to put it that way. I mean, yeah, like obviously, for the most part, you should look at it and probably assume that Avok will take the win. And Avok has been looking really good as well, like recent form as well, especially. I think we've seen a lot going into terms of practice, like speaking to him. It seems like he is quite driven to come out here and, and really kick up a fuss. I think it's mm. just a hard opening map because, well, hard opening match rather, especially with the fact that uh, immediately into the mix, you know, we're doing the cross region play. So that, that could be a bit of a downside to it, potentially of how that affects things. Nosfer as well. I think he's quite used. Uh, in terms of trying to play a round ping, because that was, that was something we saw him overcome really early on into the first stage, right? Because of playing from a different region from Brazil. Yeah, and that's actually a really valid point in the, uh, how well is, is Avic going to adjust? I think the, yeah. the onus is more on him to, to undertake that. So we'll see. Obviously, we never want to delve too much into how much that's impacting the gameplay, but at the end of the day, just recognizing as a fact is, I guess the most important thing to do right now. Oh yeah, it's just, it's just one of those where like, I think historically, Nosfer was able to bend that to, to his advantage in the past, where he kind of realized he had to counter, uh, counter against it. And that's what we saw him playing a lot more aggressive, right? Like some of the crazy Nosfer games is when he would just engage and fight over and over again, because he'd use that as a disadvantage, which is a smart way to incorporate it. Just ignore it, man. Just just go out, go ahead and play your game. That's what I'd do. Yeah, but that's why you're I'd not lose. qualifying anymore, Dan. Yeah. That's why you're in the casting booth. That's where I want to be. Sit next to you. you know, you, actually, just think of that. You're the only person I've ever been casting with that genuinely makes me feel civilized and dressed up. Really? I, I thought you were going to say feel sick then. And I was like, wow, <laughs> sorry. I didn't realize I'm that bad. Well, no, you're all right. It takes a while. It takes a while to get back to you. It's been too long. Yeah, no, it's fine, mate. I mean, you're looking pretty small recently as well. You've not been going to the gym as much? I'm respecting social distancing. Oh, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. Well, 
we weren't seeing much social distancing in the server, Dan. As Avok and Nosfa are in, we're ready to kick this one off. It's a best of three. So hopefully they get in each other's faces and start doing some damage. Yeah, but Avex obviously needs to be very wary of the speed that Slash brings, but having the utility of the grapples always means he has that kind of get out of jail free card if he's in the right position, can get up to the high ground, use the verticality that Blood Covenant brings to most effect. That's what we see so far. Getting away from Nosfer as he puts some pressure on, on the bridge. Nice retaliation by Nosfer though, hitting a good rail. And we are having a little bit of a cagey start, but that's to be expected. It is. Obviously, one factor to keep note of as well, of course, Avuk, the hair is tucked back for the minute because of the headset. I don't know if that will affect his overall skill power. It could be a Super Saiyan type situation, Daniel, where obviously, you know, the, the more flowing, the more aggressive the hair, the higher the power level. Is that is that the theory? I mean, quick players are actually, you know, they're, they're pretty well done. I'm enjoying the fashion going on mm -hmm. in QPR. Oh, yeah, there's some good looking quick players out there. I'm excited to see if there'll be another appearance from the gangster himself later on into the show. Or Cybus. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> oh. Nice heavy machine gun coming out from Abek. The good retaliation round from Nospa, though, does set Abek back and he goes in, but what a rocket! How did he create that angle? Nosfer with the spawn of the sentry, though. That's got to be frustrating for Abek. All right. Well, off the back of Abek holding on by the skin of his teeth, he does go down and the game goes one to one. Slow stuff so far, though. Nothing too ridiculous here. Ooh, the headshot angle. A couple of tags going out from the rail, but the connection just isn't being landed. Finally, a shot will come in, but in this point, Nosfer shot off every single round to do consistent damage to Avok, just slowly burning off his HP. Yeah, and that's what Nosfer is actually doing better than Avok at the moment, as you say, is that range game. Making sure that Avok can't push, so. Trades have been largely in Nosfer's favor to this point. But positioning-wise, Avex generally had the slightly upper hand. Nice little rocket, but doesn't connect with the rail. Nosfa now is looking healthy. Nosfa. Skating his way around. A Nosfa with speed is a scary prospect as well. Ooh, misses the rocket, but the rail comes out. And that's buckled Avok. He's got a back off. There's still 10 seconds until we'll see heavy spawn in as well. So Nosfer's put himself into a great position when it comes to stack. And he is hunting him down. Only issue is, of course, he's on the Athena. So he can quickly make his escape with the grapple down. Yeah, and that's going to be the challenge for Nosfer is how does he track down his opponent? So he has to now make his presence felt on the high ground much more. Nosfer so far has been playing that low ground very well. But as you can see, Avok jumping in and out on this high ground with the rail. Causing a lot of problems for Nosfer. Ooh, through the plasma trail, making it look quite cinematic, like a firework show. As that rail will land, it'll dodge his way past the rockets that are being fired down upon him as well. But he can't actually trade much more damage back. He is consistently making this awkward rabbit though, which is a big point, especially if he hit that rail on the drop down, it would have been sublime. Instead, he backpedals his way into the heavy, hits him with a follow up, and leaves him quite low. Yeah, we can see the challenges of light versus light playing out as he comes in with a shotgun. Nice read by Nosfer to get Avic on the drop down. He's also caught him off the spawn as Avic again doesn't get the best of spawns himself this time. Lady Luck is not in his favor so far. There will be another shotgun chase coming through Nosfer here. A little bit wary as Avic does back off and Nosfer plays it safe for now. Lady Luck can be a fickle mistress at times, but at the minute. It's Nosfa that seems to be getting the odd bit of favor now and then. Back in with the LG as it is pulled out. Cause Avok to drop his way back over towards Mega. Grabs it to heal himself up. Nice little tap on the feet there. Nosfa looking like Quentin Tarantino, Dan. He's shooting feet. He is, but Avok does get away. And in doing so, has picked himself up a Mega. So he's back on the board in terms of items. He's only had one heavy all game. So what... That was interesting. Nosfer just skirting in a little bit too far. And Avic now got a nice little split on these items. 10 seconds between them. So he can get across to this Mega. And we can see Nosfer in a bit of trouble stack-wise. Question is, can Avic find him? Close towards five minutes. And time being stalled out. Our glasses being snatched up to replenish the plasma trail as well. Here's the footstep and quickly adjusts his aim as he'll flip back around. But did he expect this? Avuk full committal. Up the bounce pad, charges in. 
He's trying to do some damage here, and the LG Whoa. was crisp. Rinses his way through Nosper's HP, but it won't matter. His reactions with the rail are on point, and he'll shut down Abbott once again. Two frags up now. Yeah, but this is it. You have to be so wary taking these engagements as light champion. If you haven't whittled down your opponent, Single stray shot, a single rail can turn the whole engagement on its head, and that's exactly what happened there. Avic didn't do enough, I guess, pre work to manipulate the opportunity as he needed to, and Nostra's retaliation, defensive aim was on point. Good play with the tri bolt from the angle as well, stopping any kind of courageous swing from Avic. Avic that needs to backtrack at this point. We've got five seconds until Mega spawns in. There won't be any contest for it. It'll allow him to take it, but he is ready for the exit. HMG Prime, but he doesn't go out on top. Instead, drops his way down. You can also see now Nosper's got a better positioning up on this high ground. But Avec pushing it aggressively, and he manages to catch him off guard as the rocket doesn't hit. Nice, characteristic push from Avec there. Ooh. A quick flick there from the HMG as well. Brilliant rocket play. As Nosfer's up close and personal, he just hits him. The close quarters contact, overthrows him. And now he's grappling his way back in like a madman as well. So nice. Great use of the ability there, Dan. Yeah, both those frags were just from perfect breeze from Avic. Knowing what Nosfer's movements were and trapping him in both the weapon points. So really nice play by Avic. And so quickly he's turned this map on his head. Four to three. There's still a lot of time left, and we've seen how much danger Nosfer could pull out when he's found his groove and got a few items to his name. But since Abbott's quite in control, he's done a great job of just taking the map away from Nosfer. It's also the big boon of being on that Athena as well. Grapples can be used so well for instigation, like he's shown, but you can also use them for your escape routes. And if this goes late game, there's a lot of potential here that Abbott could use it to avoid and evade and pick this one up onto a, an opening series win down. Yeah, the difference is that when Avic was on the back foot in the starting period, he was always keeping an eye on the items, making his presence felt, even though the engagements weren't always going in his favor. Mm. Nosfer hasn't really done that. So you can see Avic's stack is just huge, and that's why he's able to make these super aggressive pushes in, because Nosfer's not doing enough to stop that pressure. And I guess that's a question of experience. Have another fight coming up here as well. Ooh, it's actually just the hidden rail from Nosfer. There's a bit of damage to break off the armor that was just picked up by Avak and thrown on his chest. Nosfer wants to leave him looking like a mess instead as the rockets come in. It denies the aggression back onto Mega, but there's still five seconds till it's up. It's early as hell. And Avak's going to push in aggressively. Might switch to rocket as he's not going to be able to get enough damage with the lightning gun in. It. He didn't switch to rocket, and that's what made him pay. It was a good move, maybe unnecessary, Avic, given the time and the scoreline, but that's Avic. Nice jump up with the shotgun, but has to be wary of going for the choke point. Drops down, tries to get that read, nearly works out. All right. Now it is getting a little bit frightening. A lot of gore and guts coming out between these two. A lot of heart being displayed from Nosfer as well. He times it out so we can get another Mega. Damage being exchanged between the two of them. And it brings him back at least into the realms of possibility. But they need to hit their rails. Nosfer on one HP. Still taking the fight like a madman. It was the best he could do to try and get the edge. But Avic snatches it. One frag up, Dan. With 60 seconds left. Yeah, once he's got this heavy, he just needs to take the high ground. Stop Nosfer from getting that rail, which he actually already has. Uh, saying that, and he would have done his job. So... Big rail from Nos for there means he should go on the aggressive. He's going to wait around with Mega, and now's the time he should go. Still got quite a bit of time to make this happen with only one frag in it. So that's not the way to do it, though. Picks the engagement up the bounce pad, so it just gets licked up in the air. The lightning fight from Frightening Heights for Avuk. Oh. Avuk, though, what? his lips has been busted open. The man's been left with a smashed in face as Nosfer. Oh, he's got the confidence to try and take this one, and he's playing aggro. He's got the better stack, sends himself round, no winding way. in with the LG, and he has definitely just wound up Avic off the back of that. The one oh frag with 15 my. seconds left, Daniel. This is the first map, surely. There's no way Avic can catch him now. He's got one hook left, and he's going to have to use it to get in. He's found Nosfer, but can he actually get in? The answer's going to be no. He skirts away, and that will be map one to the Brazilian. Wow. 
Look Ooh. how calm he is as well, dude. You would be shaking. Like, your heart would be pounding. The, the fact he pulled it off with that one play, I, it looked like it was doomed as well. With the bounce pad engagement, I was thinking, oh, it was a bit shaky. But no, just turns it around, flips it on its head and shuts it down, Dan. To pixel perfect rails, literally. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, why even peek at Avic at that point? You're railable and... I mean, sometimes the aggression pays off, and unfortunately for Avi, this time it, it did not. There were a couple of questionable plays towards the end there. The one engagement over on the Mega where he tried to force the issue at 4-3 to three when he probably didn't need to. And then that final one going just, you know, one pixel too aggressive and not so him pay. Crazy, crazy stuff. In terms of a first series, we started it off well. Obviously, you know, as I said, Dan, Never of doubted him did. for a second. Never yeah. doubted him for a second. Always said that Nosfer would take it. That's what I said in the pre-ground. This is all, all the matters. Nosfer's the best player in the world, isn't he? He might as well be. I mean, that, After performance, that performance, yeah. Yeah, that performance was that performance was really, really strong. Um, and I think Avec will be a little bit rattled because he had a good level of control there in the mid game and wasn't able to make it count. I felt the Nosfer was maybe a bit too passive, but then that big mistake there, as we saw over by the Mega, made it count and got himself back into the game and never really looked back. So full credit to him because Abek had a, a good strangle on that map for a large period of time. But when Nosfer had control, mm. he used the slash so, so well. And it just shows the vulnerabilities of Athena when you've got a good slash blow. Yeah. Not happy, Abek. Mm. Man, the one frag difference. <sighs> the like 30 seconds he had to pick it up in as well. That was crazy. That was actually a sick way to start us off. Like Blood Covenant coming so in good. there was big. That was a really tasty match. It had it all right. Because the first couple of minutes were actually pretty calm as well. It was. and uh, it was. We saw both styles of the players coming out as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the rail from Nosa was insane throughout. And that's what kept him in it. Yeah, it definitely gave him a big edge and just cut it open at the last minute. There was a couple of questionable plays throughout that one as well, like a few of the timings. I did like the fight from Avok. Obviously, when we saw him jump on top of Nosfer, where there was the six seconds before Mega came up, but it just felt like it was a bit of a hard fight because there's so much burst damage you need to do, right, to actually take him down before Mega spawns, and that was a yeah. bit of a messy one. I thought he was going to swap to Rocket and then knock Nosfer off the Mega, but he just persisted with the, the Lightning Gun, and then it wasn't even close at the end of the day. I think Nosfer ended up with 60 HP after picking up the Mega, so was a uh, not a good fight from Avec in hindsight. Yeah, it was definitely a bit of a rough one. Looking at what we've got coming up here, though, for the second map in the series as well, this is actually a pretty tasty champion lineup. Nosfer on Galena, no stranger there. Obviously, he's played an awful lot of Galena. We've always seen him being pretty damn good with her. But Avuk pulling out the Strog and Pika down. That's what's got my eyebrow raised. Yeah, I definitely, I really like that pick. And we can, and we can see the game plan coming out when you pick Strog. You want to fight, you want to be aggressive. So expecting him to take the game is Nosfer, but Nosfer with the Galena, more than happy to retaliate, but play a little bit slower at the same time. All right. Well, here we go. Second map in the series. Obviously, at this point, oh, it's all stacked on Avuk. He's got to pick this up if he wants to stay in the float. It's not a best of five. It is a best of three. And already, we're seeing a little bit of damage exchanged between the two of them early on. The missed shots with the rails. Avuk, he's quick. Cleaning up, locating the totems that have been put down to take away any potential pocket heals from Nosfa. And that's going to be key. We know this is one of the maps where you can get that overstack up and... Often a common strategy to do so. Try and use your totems, get the overstack, play around the heavy more than the, the mega. So cleaning up the totems at any opportunity is an important task to undertake. Mundane, but important. Oh, you can't. You can't allow the totems to live. They need to be shut down. Yeah, but you've got to do your house up cleaning. And we can see already Nosfer undertaking that. He hasn't moved from this heavy room since, you know, 10 seconds into the game. So playing around it, but... That's already lost a totem. Yeah, Avuk in the maid outfit doing his cleaning duties at this point. Sounds like something right out of 40 Lions fan fiction. But we've got a minute <laughs> and 30 in this game, Dan, and no kills yet. Slowly but surely, it's starting to tick its way over. Avuk has been on the hunt the entire time, though, looking to find the opening engagement. Wanted to sink his teeth in there with a the railgun, but won't land the shot. Follows it up with a peeker, but Nosfer's already dipped out. Yeah, and it's so difficult for Avec because he knows exactly what Nosfer's doing. It's just how do you how do you stop it? Because if you push in there, you're generally going to be on the back foot. One bad rocket, and you could be your death. So you have to find a way to eke him out 
uh, Chim out. And we see him moving out ever so slightly through our X-ray vision. Avec obviously not knowing that, but it's just playing for the Mega here, trying to second guess Avec, and he does so well. Avec will back down to get the heavies. It will be a trade at the end of the day. The key now is that Nosfet is out of his habitat. Mm. And across the streams as the beams are being fired off at one another. Nosfa dips around the corner and tries to set himself up for a trap, but Avok not playing into his hand. Instead, leaps over the wall. We'll track down another totem. See Nosfa reveal himself, but Nosfa misses the engagement round. They go one for one on the current blows, though. And Avok realizes it's probably time to Scarpa. Mega is up, and he can claim it. It seems like they'll be trading the major items on this rotation. Yeah, but the tempo is very much dictated by Nosfa at this point, as He's playing incredibly slow and Avec not finding a way to push in, respecting Nosper's combat skills as he should. Here we go though. Pika being pulled out, trying to get the aerial advantage, keep the flick shots going up. Nosper's HP going down. LG pulled out low on ammunition. Lot on lot across the board for three of the major weapons here for Avec. Oh no, not again! The man always nice. survives on one HP, but he is dropped. The follow-up rail was crisp. He does frag him out to get the opening kill. Three minutes and 30 in. Yeah, really nice by Avic there. Played it so patiently. And then as soon as Nosfa pushed out, made it count with some good back-to-back -back rails after not hitting really anything with the first opening engagements. And now he's got full control. 10 seconds flip on the items, and you can see the pressure Nosfa's in. He's just running for his life. That big rocket is signals the opening. Mm. Totem comes down immediately. Heavy's up in a few seconds, but he's not going to be able to get that one. And momentum now is firmly with Avic. Oh, hello. Straight back in, though. He's looking aggro. Man going modern military as he pulls out the HMG and just hits him over and over again. But it won't matter. Peekaboo after peekaboo. Avic will make him fall down. And he's turned that one kill opening into a free frag fiasco at this point. Peeking through the grate as well. Grabs the mega. He can dive down on him, Dan. And the, the plan is becoming a little bit unraveled now. As soon as you die and you lose control, that's when you need a change of strategy. So interesting to see how Nostra reacts because he, yeah, he can no longer play that slow tempo game. He's going to have to be more proactive. It's a good start to do it as well. I feel like Nosfa, this is normally the sort of environment that he can pop off in as well. It's a good position to be in for him in terms of trying to get back into the game. He's good at playing aggressive Quake. He's good at setting the tempo. He does need to get himself at least some stack to work with. And obviously Avok isn't going to want to allow that. Right now he's running around looking like a Henry the Hoover, just sucking up all of the major items and spitting out damage. At least now he's really hitting some heavy hitters as well. He's dropped Nosfer down quite low, just in front of the stairs. Brilliant play. That was absolutely fantastic use of the tri-bolt there. Couldn't quite get the kill with the Pika, but he's definitely sent him back. Yeah, and to your point, he looks a lot more comfortable, as you said. He's the one taking the initiative. He's got the champion to make that happen. Playing Athena against a Slash or Blood Covenant, you, you're pretty vulnerable to her speed. So he did struggle with the way Nostra was playing in that aspect. But now he's the one controlling the tempo he's got after the first frag. And as you say, he looks incredibly comfortable. Although that's some big rockets. He'd be wary of peeking, having learned his yeah. lesson on the last map. And still, Nostra's chasing. Good rocket jump in the Royal combo. All right, timing wise. Still tons to play with. He doesn't need to panic just yet, but he is being kept in the air. Oh no, Dan, he pulled out the parasail. And he has been shipped off by Avok. Four frags back in the lead. A free frag advantage here. And four minutes of time to work with. It felt like that was going to be Nosfa's gambit of getting himself a second kill. It didn't go down like that. And now he's being chased once again. Avok, he has the high ground established. Doesn't know that the totem has been placed. Just playing off the back of the tribolt spam. Good read, though. He knows where he is. If he hits the rail, it'll be a lot of damage to just tank onto Nosfer immediately. Yeah, but he doesn't need to. He's uh, actually playing a little a bit more restrained than we saw on the last map. Even as you hear, waiting to hear what time the heavy pickup was and not even delaying the Mega, actually keeping them split, which gives him a bit of a lifeline to fall back on. Means that Nosfer cannot take both items. So if Nosfer, and if Avec plays well, 
It's a good position here to take them out. Ooh, the peekaboo row saying hello. Oh, but it feels like Avok wants to say goodbye to this encounter. The LG consistently rattling off again, finds his feet. He cuts him off here with the drop down as well. Timing on this is pretty swish, but the issue is the heavies already come up. So he goes back to the lip, tries to clear it out on the corner and connects another clean follow up with the rail. Look at the adjustment as he's pulling out the tri -bolt. Still really trying to hammer home and get himself a, a fifth frag here, Dan, but he doesn't really need to. He can't afford to just waste time if he wants to at this point. And that's exactly what he's doing. I really love the way in there. His, even though it seems like he's playing slow he's, and defensive, he's actually playing incredibly aggressive in terms of his positioning. Nosfer cannot get out. <gasps> he's what? Just, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jack. Having a bit of fun now. I think Nosfer knows this map is pretty much out of control. I think pushes in should be an easy kill, but manages to pop his opponent through the telly. Oh man, it, it felt like one of nice. those where, oh, hello. It, it felt like one of those, you know, where you're just like, all right, come on, he, he probably should have hit that shot. Yeah, I might as well just give it to him. Done here. And look now, now he's not, he's not asking for anything. He's just taking it. He's broken into the house. He's pushed over the CD rack. Nost was not getting any of his CDs back, Dan. They're gone. Yeah. This is just brutality. It is. And we saw the game plan from Nosfer from the off. It was going to be to uh, try and keep it to a close score line. Maybe he could one 2 0 victory. But as soon as he lost that frag, the map kind of unraveled. And we didn't see much of a change in the way he was going to approach this. So mm. Avec just controlled it, really. That high ground was his for most of the map. And that's the position you need to control. God damn. I, I mean, even then, though, right? Like, at this point, dream scenario, we get a third map. First series we get where we go into the best of three format. Both competitors take a map each, and both of them have shown a lot of reserve as well. The comeback from Nosfer was sick. That was a hell of a play. The fact he was able to close it out and actually best Avok there took a lot of clutch. Whereas now from Avok, this has just been a, a true tested display, really, of a lot of his skill set. He's just had great control for the entire game. And whenever there has been a glimpse of Nosfer getting into it, he just shuts it down and stamps it out. Yep. But we saw here, only part of the story here, but the fact that when Avok gets to set the tempo, Nosfer couldn't find a way to keep up with that tempo. And now we're moving into a map on Awoken where we've got Ranger in Avok's hands against a BJ for Nosfer. Avok, once again, has the champion at his disposal where he can dictate that tempo. So not to the same degree, but still, it's definitely in his favors. It's going to be interesting to see how Nosfer actually re reacts to that. Particularly if he's playing such a range heavy game, the BJ skill set doesn't come in and play as big of a role as it could do as someone who plays a very lightning heavy game. It's going to be a, a really engaging last map, Jackie. I think it's going to be sick. We, we get the best of both worlds now. We've seen both of them start to ease their way in as well. We know they're both on form because some of the shots that have been coming out from either side have been pretty crisp. So hopefully we just get a brawl. I, I think that's the best case scenario, Dan. We just really get a scrap out of the last map. Yeah, and if we do, it might raise me from the dead because, you know, I'm, I'm looking like a corpse. Well, you know, that's the thing a lot of people don't realize about our casting duo is that, you know, I'm actually a sucky bus. I've just been draining your life force, Dan. It feels that way. <laughs> that's what it's like having to cast with me. It, yeah, it, it's quite draining casting with you. Oh, yeah. Uh, is that why you've been looking so small? Is it not the fact you haven't been going to the gym? It's just I've, I've been draining you. It's just mentally challenging, yeah. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am sorry. <laughs> It's all good. I have fun with you, Jackie, and I have fun watching these two as that was a really good map to watch. Um, we saw very conflicting strategies and we saw some good choices from Avec throughout. Uh, like I said, I really enjoyed the way, even on the defense there, he just made sure he controlled that mid ground. The way he then tied up the ice and timings, meaning had had that get out jail free card. And mm. Even though, as I said, it looked quite passive from Avec, I'm sure from Nos's point of view, it was suffocating because you can see Avec right there. This is from Nos's POV. It's just constantly in his face trying to rail him. So wherever wherever Nos was going, Avec had this kind of 360 vision of the map and just trapped him around and we're just pouncing on him. So I really enjoyed to watch that.
No, it was good, man. Like, it, it genuinely was a great map, actually, in terms of some of the little nuances we got. It's always beautiful. Like, you know, I know a couple of times, obviously, we've described Quake as being more like a game of, a game of chess mm -hmm. in FPS form, whereas that was a little bit more like a dance for, for a, quite a few of those opening engagements, right? It was like the waltz between these yeah. two. And you look at the damage difference, 3.7 to 2.4. You could just see the absolute domination that came out from, from our back there, even though the items were not too different. Obviously, nearly 10 megas is quite a lot, but even across the board in terms of heavy and lights. It was just pure domination in terms of positioning and the way Avic was pressing his advantage. Oh, yeah. And obviously third and final map then between these two where this story has to end is Awoken. So just off the back of that, like it, it screams like it should be an exciting affair. Then you glance over at the champions that we're having pulled out as well. Ranger in play, you've got the BJ as well. We could actually have some pretty crazy plays on this, Dan. Yeah. I, I hope that's the way it goes. Yeah, I think the Ranger is definitely the favorite in terms of champions here. And the map pick means a higher tempo game, which should favor Avek. Mm -hmm. Everything we've seen today, Nosfield wants to slow the pace down. So it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun either way. Oh, it will be. It will indeed be fun. As we're heading into it, we're getting ready to kick this one off, and I can't wait to see how it's gonna go down. I I think there is a lot of stock here potentially that Nosfer could pick it up as a third map. I think it favours him honestly in, in terms of the map, Dan. Favours Nosfer? Yeah, I, I think Nosfer's gonna have a field day with a woke third and final. I think you're wrong, but we'll, we'll agree to disagree again. Well, let's see. We will. We will. That's we like hard-hitting facts and journalism here, and we'll see what comes out from these two that prove us wrong. As we're jumping in on Avex POV, already got the rocket rail combo, and again, very similar to the last map, making sure he's the one in position on that mid to high ground. Has that full rotation of both sides of the map. It's the place you want to be if you're setting the tempo, taking the initiative. Goodness, the tri -bolt. Blowing up straight in the face of Avuk. His eyebrows are gone, Dan. They've been singed right off. Tribot's really underused, in my opinion. I think Raph is the only one that uses it consistently and well. I feel like we've had more, specifically this season as well. We've seen a lot more yeah. play from it. And it is sick as well. You can see the difference of like the, the players that are really proficient with Tribal. It is a beauty to watch. This is a beauty of an opening engagement, though. Gotta be careful! Avuk, full throttle! Be careful! Oh, no. Oh, gas, no break, but he goes straight into a rocket and it breaks him. But he gets the uh, spawns this time, unlike the first map. He definitely gets the favor of the spawns there, picks up both major items. Nosper completely unaware that Meg is already gone and he will be going down here. So it doesn't work out too badly, but once again, shows the thought process from Avec. Wants to be aggressive, uses that orb well, and he's going to run into Nosper here. Nice rail, decides not to take the engagement. Instead, does what he needs to do. He's not going to be able to pick up this Mega, though, as Nosfer is just waiting around. But really, really nice repositioning. Oh, oh mate, that's something special. Avuk pulling out the rails when he needs to. Perfect time for this man's rambunctious attitude. Bouncing him up in the air with the rocket play, switching out to the HMG when he knows he's low to leave him down, making a mess out of this man. But the issue is he's Ooh. fighting back, but it's a trade. Oh, Dan, like they're out on the school playground with Pokemon cards, they're trading. That was awkward, but somehow comes out to a trade. And this is equally as awkward as Nospa just walks into his death just before the Mega Swords. And Avex says, thank you very much to the free frag. I am now back to normal. Nosfer here a little bit late again, trying to force the issue with the rockets. He bounced up the pad at the switch and he's what? still alive. Mary Poppins is going to pop him with a nail gun, but when a shot he gets pulled out, he's dropped straight back. <laughs> Six to three. We said we wanted a scrap and this has been a hell of a spectacle. Only two minutes and 30 in and they are giving it their all. Uh, this is fun so far. This is what we wanted to see. Nosfer coming back to fight. Not going to let Avec run this playground. It's He's here. He's the big bully. He's walked in. He's taking away all of his Yu-Gi-Oh cards. No pots of greed for you. Because right now, he's the one getting greedy for kills. Up by three. But Nosfa attempting to get back into the flow of the game. Good read. Caught him out with the audio. The tri -bolt spam doing a little bit of damage as well. But when he's got two of them, will it be a bit better? The LG's starting to burn its way through. Oh. Stack. The tri -bolt nearly frags him as well. Oh, that was some serious spammage from Nosfer as he was incredibly early for the Mega. If Nosfer cleans up his timing, he's actually in a really good position here to get back into this game. At the moment, he's leaving himself very vulnerable. He's only kept in the game with some great shots. 
He's becoming very vulnerable by just standing around on major items. Luckily, Avec hasn't made him pay just yet, and he has to reposition with the orb. Great use of that ability, but Nosper's there. <laughs> Route guns to the ass. They love tap. Oh, they're in the showers before the big game. He's getting him pumped up. Now he wants to do a bit more as well. Knows he's towards middle, but he's not going to lurk around. Instead, dips out to grab himself the armor. Four minutes in, Dan. And it has been popping off. This is a brawl. It's like they've had all night in Weatherspoons. They're just windmilling. Oh, the Cockneys will get that reference. And that's the market that I like to commentate <laughs> for. I'm sure Harry was smiling. Harry smiles at everything. Yeah, he does. That is true. Last for that, coming up with the lightning. He's going to take Avec on and he sticks around way too long. And look how healthy uh, Nostra is now. He's got so much time before the major items as well to go around and bully Avec if he can find him, which he will do around Banana. Avec is still sticking around. Knows he's got the orb, but he's just going into his doom. And it's six to six. Oh, oh mate. Here we go. 12 kills. So many bodies littering the map that it's starting to look like they're being used for feng shui. But there's still so much more time to go. Engages once again with the LG, beating him back towards Banana. He wants to frag the man, but he's keeping himself alive. Barely topping that bar back up, as he will back up. Keep the distance. Both of the guns being pulled out, though. The Akimbo nice. onslaught. Oh, two rails, but he'll only need one. Killings. Oh, and he's going to go down it again. No, he's done enough damage that the rocket to himself, in fact, did it. Quite a lot. And Abek, how, oh my word, that rocket was so close. That one is big, though. Woof. I'm sweating. Just after Khan. I'm sweating, let alone them. To be fair, you haven't been for the gym for a while, so I imagine this is a bit of a cardio workout, Dan. But these two men, they're looking muscly, they're looking burly, and they're showing off all of the brawl, the brawn, rather, that they've been bringing out tonight. Oh. Dire roll engagement once again. He's risking it for a biscuit, but Nospa on the other side up the bounce pad burns his way through Avok, shuts him down. And now that lead is starting to grow. Yeah, and Avok is making some questionable plays here. He's once again, he's get caught out by the dual wield. And yeah, the last few minutes, Avok is making a couple of big mistakes that you wouldn't expect. And Nospa is making a pay time and time again. Good rail coming oh, oh. out. Tries to hit a second, but. The third does connect and he's in a lot of trouble once again. Heavy's not up. Nosfer should be killing him just before it. And he does. Oh. Lovely shot. He's kneecapped him. Avic looks a bit out of ideas right now. He needs to come up with some kind of new system quick. He's got to hit him with a new nice. flavor. But the Dire Orb isn't going to help him. That just makes it easier for Nosfer to lamp him in the face. 11 kills. He's nearly six frags up over Avic here on Awoken. And we're only six minutes and 30 seconds into the game as well. This has been a ridiculous affair. It's the third map between the both of them as well. So whoever wins this carries on in the bracket. Whoever loses, it will be dropped down to the lower brackets. There's an awful lot riding on the next four minutes. Also, though, taking his foot off the pedal a little bit. And this is a long time to go on Awoken. So definitely can't let Avec run the map. Look at the stack that Avec has. Remember, he has that orb as well to close the gap. He's found him. Orb through Nosp, a big rocket, but it's not enough. Avec gets another rocket off just in time to save his stack a bit more just before the heavy as well. He wants to go on the aggressive. He knows where Nosfer is. The question is, can he catch him? But instead, decides to double back, play the item because he realizes there is still three minutes to go. This is going to be the end point for Avex running the upper bracket already. Will he drop down to the lower bracket and have to slog it out? If he can't bring the game back, that's where he's going to be. But at the minute, he will win out in his 1v1 and shut down Nos for this time. Goes to eight kills. There's a little bit of time to work with here as well, but he's got to chain these together, Dan. Tribolt fadeaways, he needs to dip out. Issue is, both of these major items are still on cooldown. They won't be up for about 10 seconds between the both of them. He's got to make do with the smaller items that are littered around the place. Here's Nos for at least, and can fire down on top of him. Even if he gets the heavy, he might still find the frag. Yeah, he's kind of stuck there. Avic wants to make him pay because he knows he's got him trapped, but cannot a risk giving away a frag with two minutes to go is dead gets that mega will take up at least one of the lights which is perfect and now he knows where Nosfer is can he hit a racket no instead he just isolates the room pick up this light and he's incredibly healthy now Nosfer's dual wield is back up though so that's going to be a big part of the next fight oh timing on that was beautiful Avok holding his own no way for him to no walk way. into the scope but again double railgun all across the map from Avok he pulls it out 
Oh, that is disgusting. Our Nosper is just playing against the man right now. He's just ripping him to pieces, Dan. That was so good, but Avec with the good decision to double back in. Will Nosper be able to get there first? Yes, he can. What? What is this? And this is absolutely carnage from him, and he's still giving it as well. Avuk buckled from the distance. The shotgun speciality pulled out as he hits him from miles away and buckles the man, breaking his bones. Can't even afford to go for the heavy. He's just wanting to chase this and gets duked. Oh, Nosfer. Vamos. I know that's Spanish, but vamos. He's just giving it. The Latam lunacy being pulled out from the big Brazilian Nosfa. Well, well ahead here. And with the amount of time left on the clock, this is him forging his legacy in the bracket play. He'll be making his move up and he's getting cheeky with it as well. Game of hide and seek. He was world champion in hide and seek back in 2004, Dan. And he knows he's won it. So he's just going to settle in for the long night. Wow. I mean... I know he could do it, but I didn't expect it today, and he has proved me wrong. Look at he, his reaction as well. Look how happy he is. He he's deserves just it. head down. Like he, he's literally just he can't believe it. I mean, he was just clutch. I mean, there were so many times where any one of those fights could have gone another direction. But think of think of Matt One, the winning yeah. frag. Pixel frags to the head of Athena with 140 ping. I mean, that earns my respect, if nothing else does. And that last map, some just back-to-back -back highlight reel from both of them, really. But the way Nostra regrouped after going down, was it 4-0 in the first yeah. minute? Just to come back and absolutely slaughter it was so impressive. Even if you just think about the first map, that kind of set us up for the pace of the game, right? Like coming in swinging, Avuk basically had a, a frag on a platter and just got rinsed by a hell of a response rocket. There was just so many crazy little adjustments that made that series far, far crazier than it looked like it should have been. Yeah, I mean, it was it, everything was crazy. Map two, so fast paced. Nosfer couldn't keep up with that. Yeah. Champion pick didn't help. Uh, Avec worked around the strategy extremely well. And then there was some really questionable decisions on the third map from, from both players, if I'm honest. But either way, it was just a big brawl. It's exactly what we wanted. And at the end of the day, the big Brazilian comes out on top. He did. He absolutely smashed it. And uh, someone else whose prediction has been smashed, all a chat. But of course, DJ Wheat as well. He, he can now return. Oh, hold on, hold on. Here we go. I never made any prediction. Yeah. All right, Just all right, because all I right. gave you shit on yours doesn't mean <laughs> that I made one. Uh, but Jackie, do, uh, we got we got two winners in this matchup. To paraphrase a came to paraphrase a famous quote, a, a crappy caster could be right quite twice a day, you know. So <laughs> ooh, it's it's absolutely fine for now. I will give him this one. I'll um, take it. I'll take my one win. Take That's it. All I want. Definitely take it. That was a treat for all of us, regardless of you know the uh, the outcome. No doubt about it. Um, it was that that last matchup was uh, was great. Um, mm. You know, I was I was sweating over here over here too. Um, really, 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 really impressive by Nospa. I mean, Avic also just had. I mean, I love game two um, as well, and just kind of how he played in that one, but. If this is if this is a taste of the round of 24, I'm I'm here for it, you guys. I am here for it. Oh, it's it's so good to see. I think it's also crazy as well, right? Because this is probably like the ideal map uh, matchup you want to put into the spotlight when we're showing off what some of the cross region play can look like. Because if we haven't had land in so long, getting something like this to just give that appetite a bit of a, a watering, it, it's the dream. Like the last map alone is just the ideal game of just look how exciting cross region quake can be. Yeah, it makes me sad we don't see this every week, but you know, we've got, we've got to save it for a special moment like this and to be cheesy, Quake was the winner there, I would say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and I, I, I mean, you know, uh, what a what a kind of rough reset and start for, for Avic, right? I mean, mm. a, a passable performance in stage one, the first 13 weeks, but I guarantee you that, you know, Havoc was hoping to probably sail a little bit further through the bracket before having to fight his way back. Um, it means that he's going to have a, an absolute incredible journey uh, and, and, you know, frankly, like a challenge and struggle through the lower bracket as well. Uh, Nasfa, congratulations on the win. You know, it's not going to be any easier for you in the upper bracket, but, you know, having to then go into the second game of this tournament saying, all right, well, I lose and, you know, I'm, I'm done for. It's got to be.
got to be rough. But avic has been there before. Um, you know, Nasva now, I think uh, all eyes on him to see, uh, you know, how uh, he'll uh, play through in the, the remainder of the bracket. So great, great series, though, guys. Great, great series. Um, any final thoughts before we break and go to the next matchup? I, I think that's just the dream way to, to kick it off, really, right? Like coming out of the challenges, we're getting a little bit of taste of some of the competition that's to come. Nosper put on a hell of a show. Like Avuk, in terms of opponents, he put up a hell of a fight. Nosper just driven there, though, and uh, hopefully we get to see more of that. Vamos, Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. All right. We are going to take a break. When we come back, more Quake action coming at you here for the QPL Stage 1 Finals. Don't go away. Go take a break. Grab some water, whatever you need to do, because we'll be right back.